Greetings to you today. My name is Dave Barton and I am one of the leaders at Heartland Community Church and it's my privilege to be with you today to share the Word of God and I want to thank WTJR and the wonderful people here who have invited us to do this today. It really is a privilege to stand behind this sacred desk, this pulpit. And so I, and I also want to thank uh, the tri-state area, the people of God, the churches all around that have been praying for us as a church community and uh, out there at Heartland. Many of you know that our dear beloved pastor of many years, our founder, Pastor Charlie Sharp, passed away back in February. And we've been walking through that transition and process, but I can tell you today that God is good and He doesn't change, though things on earth do change. He doesn't change. And uh, things are moving forward. I am so grateful that uh, it is Jesus that is building his church, not man. And so we understand that Heartland will move forward and be even stronger because of Jesus Christ. He has been so faithful to us. And so, again, thank you for your prayers. And we would uh, ask that you continue to pray for us as we endeavor to serve God together as the family of God. And that's what I want to speak about today. Uh, again, this is my first time on Pastor Speaks. but So I prayed about it and really felt like... Uh, the message that I'm to bring today, the teaching, is on being, belonging to the family of God. Uh, I believe with all of my heart that when I was born again, when all of us were born again, that one of the greatest privileges that we have is that we are brought into this wonderful thing called God's family. That uh, relating with God and relating with one another as the people of God is one of the highest honors that I have had in my life. And this is because God truly is a God of relationship. Everything we see in the Bible from cover to cover, from beginning to end, has everything to do with God relating with His people and then us as His people relating with Him and with one another. We see this in Genesis when God made the very first man and the very first woman and brought them together. We see the very first marriage and God's heart for family. Then we see this at the very end of the book, in the book of Revelations, as we see that in, at one time and one day we're all going to be there together as the family of God, enjoying Jesus as the bridegroom, and us, the church, as the bride, sitting down for that great feast known as the marriage supper of the Lamb. Again, from beginning to end, we see this wonderful, not just concept, but reality that we are a church family, one body. From eternity, everything that God has done, He has done relationally. And again, we can even witness this in this great mystery known as the Godhead. When I say great mystery, He's not a mystery. He makes Himself known, but truly understanding everything about God, we'll spend all of eternity get to know Him, and it'll be just like we had just started. He's that great and that awesome and that wonderful. But even the Trinity themselves, the Godhead, God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit relate with one another, Father to Son, Holy Spirit to Father, Jesus to the Father. And so we see this again in the Trinity that God's a God of relationship and He's a God of family. We also see in the Bible, and we find this in Luke chapter 10 and verse 27, that, that Jesus said this when He was asked about how that we could fulfill the law. He said that you can sum up all the Bible in two simple yet very profound ways. And I love the fact that God likes to make simple things for us as His children simple. And He simplified things by saying, you know, you can fulfill all of my commands, all of my law, all of my word in this manner. If you would love me with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength, and if you'd love one another, love your neighbor as yourself. Because God understands. God is a God of love. And the language of being a part of the family of God is one of love. And so what God is wanting to produce in this day, and this is why I'm speaking on it today, 
And I, I, I understand that there will be those in homes and those that can't attend church and those that do attend church. And I just want to encourage you today that you belong to the greatest thing on earth, which is called the family of God, the church of the living God. God loves his church and his desire is, is that we would love one another, loving him again with all of our heart. God loves having a big family. This is how the kingdom of God is exemplified in the earth. Again, love is the language of the family. This is what we are to live and build as the people of God, the church as a family. I want to say that again, the church as a family. You see, it's important to note here that the family of God is real. And what I mean by that is, is, is in the Bible, when you read the Bible and you you, you break it open and you see how we as the people of God are to live life. One of the things that we see is that God uses symbolism. Jesus spoke many times in metaphors. And he compared us as the people of God in, in some instances as to a field. But we understand that's just symbolism, that we're not a field. Um, you know, my wife and I, we love gardening and we love getting our hands in the soil and the dirt. And we've got some really nice cucumbers that we picked and some kale and lettuce and things. But, uh, you know, we're not actually a field. That's just symbolic. We don't have corn coming out our ears and, and dirt in our shoes and, and things like that. We're, we're people. We're not actually a field. There's also places in the scripture where it talks about us being an army. Now, we understand that that spiritually we're an army, but the reality is, is that I have a suit on today and I don't have a uniform or an AK-47 or anything like that. So again, this is a metaphor. Another metaphor used for the people of God is the Word of God calls us and says that, that we are a house. We're the house of God. And again, we understand that metaphorically and symbolically that's speaking that we are a temple that our bodies that are we have a soul and a spirit and a mind that God wants to come and it says in in the book of John and and that he wants to come and make his home inside of us yet literally that's a picture literally us being a house isn't a reality we're not a we don't have windows we don't have doors uh, we don't have an actual foundation uh, concrete blocks or anything like that. So again, all these are pictures that help us to be able to see what God is saying. But when he speaks about family, anytime he speaks about being family, this is not symbolic. This is not a metaphor. Being family is real. Being the family of God is real. It's not symbolic. There's a scripture I want to uh, share with you that shows this. And if you'll turn with me, if you have your Bibles there today, we're going to turn to the book of Ephesians. The book of Ephesians in chapter 3. And we're going to open up to verses 14 and 15. Ephesians 3, verses 14 and 15. And here's what the Word of God says about family. It says this, For this reason I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family... And there's that word, the whole family in heaven and earth is named. You see here the apostle, the writer's recognizing that whether in heaven or on this earth, we all form one family, the family of God. And we all derive our name from him, praise the Lord. We don't come up with our own name, even though each of our churches have names on there. We're Heartland Community Church, praise the Lord, that's, that's great. Whatever the name of your church, but in heaven we are named by God. We're His family. And the wonderful thing about this is, I like to use my imagination sometimes, and I think about the fact that we're going to have all of eternity. If the Lord tarries, I'm 56 years old, and if the Lord tarries in 30, 40 years, I will probably be, find myself standing before God. And I'm going to enter into eternity and spend eternity with my Heavenly Father. And one of the great things about that is, is I'll, oh yes, I'll get to worship Him forever and ever and ever and experience His glory and His wonder and sin will be no more and no more frailties and those kinds of things. But one of the other things that I'm going to enjoy is getting to be with the family of God forever. I think about family members such as my grandpa, my grandmother, and different ones that I'll be able to see and spend time with. But also, I think about even the, 
the people, the patriarchs that we witness in Scripture, Noah, do you understand that I believe that I could spend time with Noah in heaven? I've got all of eternity to do it. So why not look them all up? Noah, Moses, King David, and hang out with those guys and ask them about when they were on the earth and some of the things that happened. Paul, I would love to talk with Paul. We understand, we read about these these men of God in the Bible, and we do need to esteem them highly, and they're very honorable men and women that have gone before us, but the reality is they're my brother and sister. We're all part of the same family. You see, at the core of being family, I want to say this, this is probably the most important thing that I will speak about in the time that I have. At the core of being family, the family of God is relating to God as Father. It's because He's our Daddy, He's our Father, that we get to be family. He's the central figurehead. He's the reason why we can be brothers and sisters. 1 John chapter 3, if you'll turn there with me, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1 says this, How great is the love the Father has lavished on us. This is speaking about His people. This is speaking about us today. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us that we should be called children of God. And then with adding emphasis, the writer says it one more time by saying, and that is what we are. One of the greatest revelations that we can have in our lives as born-again saints, as born-again uh, citizens of the kingdom of God, servants of God, as wonderful as that is, one of the most greatest revelations is that God is our Father. It's a hard thing to grasp sometimes. That this big creator God, this all-powerful God, this God that set the stars in the space, this God that, that created all things, this God that, that uh, with one word, with one word said, let there be light, and there was light. And that light still going and going and going in the galaxies and on beyond. That powerful God, that same God, is the same God that wants to be so very, very close to you and I. You see, there's two, two words people use in doctrine that, that really are wonderful words that, that talk about God and how He operates. And one of those words is the word transcendent. And that word represents that God is so holy other, that He is so set apart, that He is so powerful, and there's no one like Him. The Trinity we're talking about here. And that is so true. And yet there's another word. Not, as, not only is God transcendent and high and lofty and, and unapproachable, and as you read in the Bible, anybody that came into His presence, they found themselves flat on their face because of His glory and His power. Yet at the same time, there's another word. And it's the word imminent. And those work together. That's because only God could do this. In His power and in His glory... And in his all-knowing, at the same time, he's a God that's imminent and wants to be close and wants to be real and wants to, has created a people that he can even be intimate with. That's very, very, very important. Again, it's hard to understand this, that God would love us that much, that, that God would create us and birth us and form us in our mother's womb so that he could have a relationship with us. You see, I... I you won't find this said in Scripture, and so I'm very careful, uh, especially in public, to say anything that isn't backed up with Scripture. Uh, you won't find this literally, but I do believe it's backed up as you take the Bible in context and in whole. I believe personally that God's, at least I'll say it this way, one of God's favorite titles, if not His favorite, is that of Father, being Father. Father God. Father God. You see, there's a powerful passage, and it's found in the book of Romans. And if you'll turn with me there as well, I've got a few more scriptures, so have your Bibles ready. But there's a powerful passage found in Romans chapter 8. And we're going to look at verses, three verses, verses 14, 15, and 16. And again, this is going to underline and underscore where I say that one of God's favorite titles, if not His favorite, is that of being Father. Father God. And here's what the word says. For all who are being led by the Spirit of God, these are the sons of God. 
For you have not received the spirit of slavery, praise the Lord, leading to fear again, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons which we cry out, Abba, Father. And that, that means Daddy God, Abba, Father. The Spirit, with the capital S, bears witness with our spirit that we are children of God. And again, I love, I love this passage because I believe it really reveals what's in God's heart for why He created us in the first place. He created us because He had a desire. He's so glorious and He's so wonderful and He's so good that He had it in His heart to create a people that He could share Himself with that he could be a father to. He had it in his heart to create a family that would fill the original tension, that would fill the earth, and that would serve him, that would obey him, that would follow him, but that would also relate with him as a child to his father, because that's who we are. Now, this word adoption, I want to take a little time with, because it's a, we're used to that word. Uh, you've heard it before, but here it is in the Bible, and so what does it mean? Well, the definition of adoption is this, to be chosen, simply to be chosen. The Greek definition, if you look it up in the Greek, uh, which is what the language in the New Testament, here's what you'll find. The definition is this, to place, and I, I, I love this, all of us can grab onto this today. I've grabbed onto it. I'm still, I'm still grabbing onto it because, again, it's, it's something your whole life, you'll, it's such a, uh, a wonder that, that we get to experience, but the definition is, is this, to place as a son, to place as a son. How awesome is this that God has chosen us, that God has chosen to take Dave Barton 30 some odd years ago, choose him, draw him, convict him, convince him, and save him, and then place him in his family. Praise the Lord for that. God called me out of something and called me into something. God called me out of something uh, that was awful. Sin was awful. I was bound up in my trespasses, in my sin. And God lifted me up. He saved my soul. But He just didn't leave me alone at that point. He then placed me in His family, called the family of God. And I thank Him for that today. Again, I love being a part of the family of God. And I'm not just talking about Heartland Community Church. I'm talking about the family of God. It's the most important thing that we belong to here on this earth and in heaven because God is our Father. And this, again, this adoption, one of the things about adoption is I have six children and I, 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 I love them. I have 16 grandchildren. And the wonderful thing about having children is, is that, you know, uh, we understand that it happens naturally and the husband and wife come together and things like that. But I also have friends who uh, have adopted children. And one of the things that was very unique and special about adoption was that the father and the mother went to the orphanage or went to the agency or went somewhere. Even I've had friends who have adopted overseas. And they went to a place and they actually looked at the children and they had a decision to make. And it was a, it was a decision of love and it was a decision of commitment. It was a decision of, of finances. It costs a lot to do this, but they actually chose a child and brought them home to be in their family. This is but a small picture of what Father God, Daddy God has done for each of us that have bowed our knees to Jesus. Is He has chosen us and brought us home to be in his family. You see, I believe this as well, that no matter what your job, no matter what your vocation, no matter what your calling in life, you may be listening today or watching today, and you may be a lawyer, or a doctor, you may be a daycare worker, a janitor, a truck driver. It doesn't matter your vocation. Whatever it is that you do, you may be called to the mission field. You may be called to preach or to be a pastor, to be a Sunday school teacher. It doesn't matter what you're called to be or to do. I believe this with all my heart. I believe it's supported in the Word of God. That the greatest calling that we have upon our lives isn't being a preacher or what we do to raise money, to, to earn money. But the greatest calling upon our lives is to be a son or a daughter of the Most High God, of our Father God. I believe that's the highest calling. I believe the greatest words that we could ever hear come in our ears and into our lives are the same words 
that Jesus heard when he went down to be baptized on the Jordan River. I've been to that place, and they still baptize people there uh, routinely. And, and just picture this. Here you have Jesus. He knew he needed to be baptized, and he went down. John the Baptist, his cousin, was baptizing people. And, and as the story goes, as we see it unfold in the Bible, Jesus asked John to baptize him. We understand John the Baptist flinched at this at first and didn't really want to feel like he was worthy of doing that. But after a short conversation, he obeyed and, and he baptized Jesus. And, and we see this picture unfold in the Bible that Jesus, when he was baptized and come up out of the water, we see the Holy Spirit descends like a dove. And, and what were those words that that God said that broke open the heavens and that Jesus heard ringing loud and clear in his ears and in his heart. Jesus was the, the greatest prophet that this earth had ever seen. Yet from heaven, God didn't say, this is my prophet in whom I'm well pleased. Jesus was the greatest teacher that's ever existed, that's walked on this planet. Yet God didn't say, this is my teacher in whom I'm well pleased. He didn't use any of those titles. He said, this is my son. God placed identity into his son. He was proud of his son. He said, this pleases me. Jesus, understand, Jesus had not done anything, at least that's recorded in ministry yet. He hadn't turned the water into wine. He hadn't healed anyone. He hadn't fed anyone by miraculous turning the bread and the fishes and multiplying them. He hadn't done any of this yet. And yet we hear from heaven the words ringing from heaven, from God himself. This is my son in whom I'm well pleased. And I believe, at least I'll speak for me personally, that for my life, those are the words that I long to hear. I long to hear God in heaven. I'm not saying I deserve it. I'm not saying I'm unworthy of it. I'm not saying I've done anything to deserve it. But I will say this, I long to hear those words from my hot father. This is my son. This is my son. No matter what I do, I, I, have the, I have the privilege of being able to travel around the world as our church's missions director. I'll be leaving on a trip in, in a week, well, actually in a week, on Friday to Eastern Europe, Moldova, and, and preaching crusades and doing things like that. But uh, when I stand before God, I, I don't want to hear, this was my missionary, this is my preacher, this is my teacher. I want to hear, this is my son. Just like Jesus, because that's, that's the, the greatest relationship I can have with him and that I'm, that I'm learning to experience in this day. You see, as the, as the people of God, we're all called to ministry. We understand that. But God has not called us to build ministry. That's not what we're to build. Even this wonderful uh, TV studio and things, they do a wonderful job of preaching the gospel and getting the word out into this tri-state area and, and it's important what they're building here and, and we pray for them and support them in this but uh, at the end of the day God's ultimate goal isn't building ministry for all of this will pass away but what God is into is building family his own family called the family of God building his church and then it's out of being family that we then can minister and build such things as this and the churches, the, the, the buildings and the things that we have. You see, God calls all of us as believers to walk to family. And I want to make sure I make this clear, make my heart clear this morning. This isn't just for Heartland Community Church. This is for all of us together. God calls us together as families and then as a church and as churches with churches, regardless of your denomination or maybe you're non-denominational. We're all part of the same family. We have the same father. We're called to be brothers and sisters in the same family. And I might add, we're on the same side. And we need to fight on the same side. You see Ephesians chapter 4, verses 1 through 5. Again, this is probably the last passage that I will read today. I've got others, but for time's sake, turn there with me. I think it's very important for all of us to hear this as the family. Ephesians chapter 4 verses 1 through 5, and it says this, Therefore I, the prisoner of the Lord, implore you to walk in a manner worthy of the calling with which you have been called, with all humility and gentleness, with patience, showing tolerance 
for one another in love. There's that love word. Being diligent to preserve the unity of the Spirit and the bond of peace. And here it is. There is one body, and I have in parentheses in my, on my paper here, family. There is one body. There is one family and one Spirit with a capital S. Just as also you were called in one hope of your calling, one Lord, one faith, one baptism. You see in heaven, uh, and, and I know all of you will concur with this, but it needs to be said here that in heaven, there's, uh, we're going to spend eternity in heaven. And we don't know again when the Lord's coming back. He could come back today. He could come back in a hundred years. We don't know. But we all do know that life on this earth is temporal. And we have an eternal home in heaven. And Knowing Him forever as Father. But when we get there, one of the things that we're going to see and we're going to find is that there's not a Methodist corner over here and there's not a Baptist corner over here and there's not a Presbyterian corner over there and there's not a denominational corner over there or a Pentecostal corner over there or a Catholic corner over there. There's none of these. What we find there, the Bible shows us that around His throne are myriads and myriads of angels and with them, joining Him around the throne, worshiping Him, serving Him, loving Him, are a people from every nation and tongue and tribe. All one big family. One big family. We are one family. And we have the privilege in this day, in earth time, to live this thing out. And the devil, he hates this. He hates family. And I know my time is getting short, but this is one of the things that the devil really fights again is God's people being family. And again, he fights against it within each local church, but then he also fights against it with churches to churches and tries to bring division and schisms and, and, and jealousies and, and so, so seeds of discord. And can I tell you what, this, this does not make our father happy. He loves for his children, if I say it this way, he loves for his children to get along. And so, in closing, I would just say today that, that God is a father, he's a wonderful father, and his plan for our lives is, are to be his children, all of us, not just getting along, but serving side by side, doing the will of God in the earth. Preaching the gospel, building the church, promoting one another. And I, I would end this way. I would close it. If you, don't, if you don't know that you're a part of this family, if you've never bowed your knees to Jesus, it's the most wonderful decision you'll ever make. And it's not just being brought. The Bible says in Psalms that we're brought out of loneliness and despair. And God wants to lift you out of that and make you a part of the family of God. But if you do belong to the family of God, cherish it, relish it, encourage others to come and join. Thank you for your time and God bless you.